Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the i9-9900K, Intel's flagship mainstream processor for the LGA1151 socket. Now we're not going to be discussing things like gaming benchmarks and whether you should even buy this thing in the first place, as all of that other mainstream content has been covered pretty well at this point by the larger channels out there. Here I want to get a better understanding of this CPU in terms of frequency, voltage, power and of course thermals. So as most of you know by now, this is an eight core 16 thread CPU with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a max boost of five gigahertz with a retail price around 570 US dollars at the time of filming. Running the chip at Intel spec of a 95 watt TDP will have the eight core turbo sitting at just four gigahertz, whereas an unlimited TDP will let the CPU consume a lot more power and boost up to 4.7 gigahertz across all eight cores. The motherboard that I'm using for testing here is Gigabyte's Z390 Aorus Pro, which I'll have a full review on soon. It seemed to handle the chip pretty well, and the most important detail here is that this board is not limiting the 9900K to the 95 watt TDP out of the box, despite claiming that it was in the BIOS. So the TDP has been let completely loose for all testing here. And by the way, massive thanks to Gigabyte for providing us with the processor for testing. Now, one of the biggest details that I wanna discuss in this video today is the CPU thermals, as this chip has been known to get pretty damn hot. That's a concerning issue for a CPU that can potentially fit into a mini ITX motherboard and a mini ITX build. There you have relatively limited cooling options, and I say relatively, you can fit a 240mm AIO in most mini ITX cases today. In some conditions though, a 240 just isn't enough. So delitting would usually be the answer here. And you know, we've done this with the 7700K and the 8700K, and we see about a 15 degree drop. Here though, the ninth generation CPUs have a soldered heat spreader, so you can still delid them, but you're only gonna see about a five to seven degree reduction in temperatures. And not only is that an invasive procedure, but you're also voiding your warranty. Most people don't wanna do that for a five degree drop. Okay, so before we get into overclocking and undervolting, I want to see how the 9900K performs out of the box with an unlimited TDP. For testing here, I'm using the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Pro on an open test bench, and for cooling, I'm using Corsair's H100i Platinum Cooler, which I believe represents a middle of the road 240mm AIO. So as I said before, this motherboard is not restricting the 9900K to a 95 watt TDP, and instead lets the chip run free with an all-core turbo of 4.7 gigahertz out of the box. It did this with a V-core of 1.18 volts under load, and load temperatures averaged out to 69.1 degrees C in Blender, and power consumption was 155 watts. So out of the box, I'd be pretty happy with that. Keep in mind, this is an eight core CPU running at 4.7 gigahertz across all cores, and the score in Cinebench definitely reflects that. And for those who don't mind a bit of tweaking, you can likely get an all core turbo frequency of 4.7 gigahertz at a lower voltage than you'd typically get with the motherboard set to auto. And in my case, I was able to get 4.7 gigahertz stable at just 1.1 volts. As you'll soon see, this does seem to be a pretty good chip in terms of the silicon lottery, but I would expect most 9900Ks to do 4.7 gigahertz at around at least 1.15 volts. And I tested this CPU at as low as 4.3 gigahertz to as high as 5.2 gigahertz. And here's a list of all the stable frequencies, voltages, and their corresponding score in Cinebench R15. Roughly, we're increasing about 50 points per 100 megahertz. And one thing I want to point out here is how low you could potentially go in terms of voltage. However, at as low as 4.3 gigahertz, you really should just buy a Ryzen 2700X for almost half the cost. Again, this sample does seem to be pretty good in terms of overclocking performance. The sweet spot, in my opinion, is running the chip at 5 gigahertz at 1.29 volts, which resulted in a CPU temp of just 70.5 degrees C. And since the clock speed is not a heavy factor of CPU thermals, use this graph as a bit of a guide in terms of how the 9900K does at specific voltages. At around 1.2 volts, most users should be able to achieve an overclock of around 4.8 gigahertz on even an average Z390 motherboard, and their thermals should be fine with a 240mm AIO. At 1.3 volts, thermals are still doable with a 240mm RAD, although you will need to make sure that your case has good enough airflow and also that ambient room temps are 
are in check. And do note that all thermal results here reflect an ambient room temp of just 20 C. Above 1.3 volts though, you really should be looking into 360 mil radiators, a custom loop, or at the very minimum, a 280 mil radiator in push-pull. As you can see, 5.2 gigahertz was not thermally stable at 1.36 volts due to the limitations with cooling. A few cores reached 100 degrees C pretty quickly. And here's a look at power consumption at full load in Blender. And I guess one of the main points of this video that I want to address is that you can get this chip running pretty cool and running pretty light on power, even at an all-core turbo of around 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz. My sample was able to achieve an overclock and an undervolt at the same time. So if operating temperatures and power consumption are a concern for your build, then that's definitely something you might want to explore. So hopefully these results help you guys out if you were planning on going with the i9-9900K and were a bit concerned with cooling at certain loads. There's no doubt that this chip does run hot. It is an eight core CPU after all, capable of eating up to 200 watts at full load with a 1.3 volt overclock. But even at 1.3 volts, a 240 mil AIO should suffice. Whether I plan on upgrading myself is certainly another video and I'd need to run some video editing benchmarks to determine whether or not the 850 Australian dollar price tag is worth the upgrade over my 8700K, but probably not. And so for those who do have 9900Ks in your system right now, let me know what your experience has been like with overclocking and thermals. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.